Hey guys, welcome back to another interesting video. Today's topic is about encoder. So encoder is a combinational circuit that takes multiple input data and converts into a single binary code. So we are giving a large amount of input data that will be converted to a single binary code by an encoder. So let us see how an encoder looks. So this is how an encoder block diagram is. So here we have M cross N encoder. So M inputs are there and N outputs. So the relation between inputs and output is M equals to 2 power N. That means M equals to 2 power N are the number of inputs and N is the outputs. So this can be written as 2 power N into an N encoder. So if we have 2 as N, then it is 4 cross 2 encoder. So now let's look what are the advantages we are getting from an encoder. So the basic advantage we are getting from encoder is that we can store more amount of data in a given space. So I will, ex I will explain this. Suppose we have an image. Suppose we have an image. Uh, let's say its size is, um, it is converted into bits and it has around 2000 bits. Okay, for storage in memory. But this 2000 bits is encoded. Okay, we are doing encoding. And now we get 20 bits for 2000 bits. That means an image is encoded into 20 bit. Now, it is better to store 20 bit rather than 2000 bits. So as a result, we are getting more data in a given space. So now suppose we are storing two images of 2000 bits, but now we are converted into 20 bit due to encoding. So we can store more than two. Okay. You can do the calculations that simple. Okay. We can also detect errors easily. Okay. How can we detect errors easily? For example, if there is an error in the 2000 bits, that will be a lot a lot of time for us to decode this 2000 bits and check where is the error but in 20 bit we can easily check where the error can be okay so how can we send more amount of data from source to destination before it was 2000 bits suppose we have a bus and this bus carries 32 bit at a time and to send 2000 bits it will take a long time trust me Okay, but for sending 20 bits, it will be a, a one cycle for the bus to transfer one 20 bit at a time. So these are three major advantages of encoder. Okay, don't forget this. First is more data, more data in a given space. Error detection is easily done and we can send more data from source to destination. So now let us look uh, encoder with enable. So as we have discussed about encoder, how it looks 2 power n into n. So 2 power n inputs and n outputs. But now we are adding an extra switch that is extra, extra input that is enable, which is used to control it, the encoder. As you can see over here, we have an enable active high. So whenever it is active high means whenever it's equals to one, that means then only the function of encoder will work. So if enable equals to zero, this will not work, okay? So similarly, we have active low. So active low is just nothing but a not gate is being added to an enable. As you can see, a not gate is added to the enable. So whenever enable equals to zero, then only this encoder will work. And whenever enable equals to one, this enable is this this encoder is disabled by enable switch. So this is used for controlling the encoder, whether we want the encoder to work or not. So now I'm gonna discuss a four to four cross two encoder. So guys, this is how a four by two encoder looks. So this is our input. So we have four inputs. So output will be two you know 2 power n cross n don't forget this one 2 power n cross n so we have four inputs and it's two square so we will have two outputs so 
I want you to say that this inputs only one of the input can be high at a time only one of the input can be high at a time so I'm gonna explain you using the truth table what I meant right now so this is a truth table so these are the inputs i0 i1 i2 and i3 and we have outputs a and b so for four uh, inputs we can have 16 combinations but I said that encoder works only when one of the input is high then only we can get the output so here i0 is high at one time and all of them are zero i1 is high then all of them are zero i2 is high and all of them are zero and similar case with i3 so now let's say what will be the outputs so whenever i0 is 1 a and b will be the outputs will be 0 and 0 so whenever i1 is 1 so output will be 0 and 1 okay so whenever i2 is 1 then output will be 1 and 0 so when i3 is 1 then output will be 1 and 1 okay so these are our inputs and outputs so don't forget that only one input becomes high at a time so we cannot have multiple inputs high at a time so now let's draw the output equations so what will be a and b so as you can see from figure so we are getting high only when uh, a is equals to i2 and a equals to i3 so so a will be a equals to i2 plus i3 if you don't know uh, how to write this you can go for k map and solve it that will be a lengthy procedure okay you can do it not 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 to worry about any what comments okay just go and do it so now let's go for b so b is high when i1 is there and high when when i3 is there okay so b will be i1 plus i3 so now let's draw a common uh, gate input how the how will be the gates will be there in the encoder so these are the two gates two R gates which will be inside the encoder block diagram so now i'm going to discuss about eight octal to binary encoder for a more better understanding of design of encoders so guys this is how an 8 to 3 encoder looks we have 8 inputs over here so d0 to d7 we have 8 inputs and we have 3 outputs don't forget this 2 bar n cross n so n equals to 3 over here now let's look at the truth table of a 8 cross 3 encoder so this is a truth table I have given the inputs already as you know that the input must be only one can be high at a time so now we have d0 has high so output will be 0 0 0 so now when one is high so what will be the output you guessed it correct 0 0 1 so when 2 is right there then we will get a binary code don't it looks like a binary code don't forget so whatever input we are giving it will be converted as a binary code that's the first definition of an encoder so d3 it will be 0 1 and 1 d4 it will be 1 0 0 and d5 it's 1 0 1 so d6 it's 1 1 and 0 and d7 so what is the binary code of 7 1 and 1 and 1 so this is how your inputs and outputs gonna be when you give the so uh, now the truth table is done now we need to get the equations for a b and c so now let's look at the equations what will be the equations for a b and c so a is 1 when you can see that d4 d5 d6 and d7 so the a equation becomes so this is our a equation for an 8 is to 3 encoder now let's go for the b equation so what will be the b when the b is 1 so as you can see from the truth table so b is when 1 equals to at 2 3 and 6 and 7 so our equation will become d2 plus d3 plus d6 and d7 so now let's look at c so c is becoming 1 at 
1, 3, 5 and 7. So equation of C becomes D1 plus D3 plus D5 plus D7. So these are our equations. Now let's draw and uh, a gate circuit. So this is how our 8 to 3 encoder looks. We have D4, D5, D6, D7 that going to A and D2, D3, D6, D7 going to B and D1, D3, D5 and D7 going to C. Okay. So uh, based on this, I want you to say there are some limitations for an encoder. So what are the limitations for this encoder? Suppose we give a value high for D2 and D4. So what will be the output? So when D2 and D4 are high both at a single time, that means D2 comma D4 are high. That means both of them are equals to one. So what will be the equation becomes? So when you know that only when D2 is high, the output should be what? Zero, one, zero. So when D4 alone is high, so what should be the output? It should be one, zero, zero. Now we have both of them high at a single time. So what will be the output? We can just find it out. So D2 is one and D4 is one. Okay, irrespective of any of these values, the A will be one in over here and irrespective of this value, A will be one. So B will also be one. So let's say all of them are zero in here. So it will be one, one and zero. Actually, you need to get either one of this, but we are getting one, one, zero. So it's a wrong case. So the output will be undefined when we have a more than one input. So don't forget this limitations of an encoder is that we are taking only one input high at a time. As a result, we are getting our true tables. As you can see in here, we are taking only one input high at a time. Never ever mix more than one input at a time. So how can this be uh, solved? How can we solve this? So this can be solved using priority encoders when we have more than one input high. So when we have more than in, more input high, like this D2 and D4 high, so we can solve using the priority. Giving the priority for D4 or D2, we have LSB priority or MSB priority. As a reason, we can go for a priority encoder, which I will talk in a separate video. Please do watch that out. So that's one limitations. What's about other limitation? Suppose, okay, look at it like way. So suppose we have, so now we let us consider all the inputs are zero. So what will be the output? Since it's a NOR gate, the output will be zero, zero and zero. You agree with me? Yes, but we have a problem here. We are getting zero, zero when D zero is high. Don't forget this, we are getting zero, zero when D zero is high. So how to solve this? So to solve this, we are gonna take an extra bet called valid. So we are going to take an extra bet called as valid. So valid decides that whenever it's zero, that means the all the inputs are zero. So we will not care about the outputs A, B and C. We will not take care of it. And we'll, when the valid is one, that means only one of the input is high. Okay, so valid decides whether our output is correct or not. So we have valid or void. Both are similar, but void is just the complement of valid. That means when void is one, that means there is an issue that all the outputs, all the inputs are zero. So void is zero, that means uh, in, only one of the input is high. So these are the two limitations of an encoder. So these are the two limitations of encoder is that if two inputs are active simultaneously, the output of encoder will be undefined. Don't forget this, all inputs are zero, so the output will be zero. So this is also a limitation. So to avoid this limitation, we are gonna use priority in our encoder. So it will become a priority encoder. And now all inputs are zero, so we are gonna use void or valid. So I hope you have understood about encoder, advantages, applications, and limitations. Uh, 
Hey, one more thing about encoder. So before you leave, you can click that subscribe button and let's get connected. And if you have any doubts regarding the topics or the previous topics in my videos, you can comment down below and I will, er, I will do reply back as early as possible. And let's meet in the priority encoder video. Okay, uh, if you want to learn more, please do subscribe. It will help me a lot and we can get connected and that will bring you huge value. Thanks for watching. Thank you so much. Thank you.